Anastasia Rose Beal. I am a harm reduction advocate and I live in Irvine, California, which is in Southern California. Her name was Danielle Zimmerman and she passed away in 2021. The first time I met her, um, I actually had gotten a flat tire and the people trying to help me were not doing it properly and I was not in the state of mind to do so. And she dropped everything she was doing to help me fix my tire. And that was my first interaction with her. And throughout the years, she, every single time I interacted with her, it was just, hey, how are you doing? What can I do for you? Is there anything you need? She was like, rave mom. So she was a sweetheart, absolute sweetheart. So Danielle was at a underground music event here in Southern California in Bakersfield, and she bought what she believed was cocaine. And it turned out that it wasn't. And what makes her situation a little bit different was that she bought, I, be, I believe about two, maybe three grams, and she actually did some at the event. And her and her friends did some, and they were perfectly fine. Um, she didn't end up finishing the cocaine at the party, so she brought it home. And the next morning, she woke up, wanted to do a quick line, you know, to get her day going, and um, she did a really big line, and it turned out that it was laced with fentanyl, and she passed away. And it was, very, very devastating for everyone. We were all very confused. We were very angry. We wanted to know who to blame. But um, it was a it was a pretty long investigation. But uh, myself and four of our friends, um, after that experience, we got really, really motivated to to get involved and to help others not experience the same thing. In addition to Danielle's passing, in the same month of March of 2021, there were three others who passed away in the Southern California nightlife community. And every single time we went to a memorial or a funeral, our friends would say, we're gonna start checking our drugs, we're, this isn't gonna happen again. But it did, again and again and again. And so my, myself and three of my close friends, we just started bringing reagent test kits and fentanyl test strips to the parties that we were attending so we could at least take care of our immediate friend group. So, you know, we, at first it was just, hey, can we, can we test your, your drugs really quick, guys? Like, if you're gonna do that, like, let us check it really quick. And then um, we got a table, we got a crappy canopy from Walmart and a very abrasive banner that said free drug checking. And we just go to parties and we check people's drugs and make sure they know what they're taking. It's okay if your ecstasy has methamphetamine in it, if you're okay with that. I'm not okay with that, but maybe you are. Um, maybe your cocaine has Adderall in it, and that's okay for me, but maybe not okay for you. So we just want people to know what they're consuming so they can make valid choices. So since Danielle's passing and all the passing of my other friends since early 2021, we always check our drugs at parties and we advocate that you can trust your homie, you can trust your friend without trusting their drugs. I always try and tell people the real way that cross-contamination happens. I try and give them a visual explanation of how fentanyl is getting into heroin, for example, but mainly how it's getting into party drugs. I, I try and explain that no one is intentionally putting fentanyl into party drugs. What's happening is cross-contamination where there's reckless dealers or people using the same bag that they used before and trace amounts of fentanyl are getting into drugs like cocaine and ecstasy and all these other party drugs and it's causing people to overdose and they aren't even opiate users necessarily. They're just using party drugs. So I, I try and teach people what happens and why it's getting into drugs and then how to deal with it by teaching them about naloxone, also known as Narcan, Cluxado. And I give them what I call a crash course training on Narcan so they can at least take care of the people around them. So I put two Narcan nasal sprays on a retractable ID holder and I carry it with me everywhere I go. I grab my phone, grab my wallet, grab my keys, grab my Narcan. I never leave home without it. I mean, you could be walking down the street, you know, going to get something from 7-Eleven and see someone passed out on the sidewalk. Or you could be heading to drop your kids off at school and you could see someone passed out in a park and they're unresponsive and they need Narcan. You could be, you know, going to a nightclub and someone's doing a bump in the bathroom and now they're passed out on the floor. I was at EDC, the uh, festival in Las Vegas, one of the largest EDM events in the country. 
and I came across someone who was unconscious, not responsive, and it was very clear to me they were overdosing. And I administered two doses of Narcan over the course of about a minute, minute and a half. From the time when I administered the two doses, it took medical 15 minutes to get on site. If I had not had Narcan on me, that person would not be alive today. So I always advocate, carry Narcan, carry Narcan, throw it in your glove box, throw it in your trunk, throw it in your medicine cabinet, underneath your sink, forget about it. And hopefully you never have to use it, but if you do,